What did Jesus do on the Monday before the crucifixion? You're going to get a lot of answers on the internet. And let me tell you why this is important. You know, we just had Palm Sunday. That's coming up in about a week or so. Um, and then you've got Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday where there's a lot of debate what happened. Everybody knows what happened on Thursday. That's where we have this big dinner. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. We've got Good Friday where Jesus is crucified. We've got Black Saturday. He's in the grave. We've got Easter Sunday, the resurrection. But what did Jesus do on the Monday before the crucifixion? You look it up on the internet, there's going to be a lot of answers. Some people say that he's got a an additional triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Uh, we've got dinner at Simon's house, cursing the fig tree. A lot of confusion exists because the starting point of a new day varies depending on the calendar you are using. Is it at sunset? Is it at midnight? Is it at sunrise? Well, my opinion is that Jesus returned to the temple on Monday and cleansed it. Now, I'm not talking about using a broom, unless that broom is in the shape of a whip. But why did Jesus need to do that? Why did Jesus need to go to the temple and cleanse it in the first place? It's because people were coming to Jerusalem from all over the world, and the Jewish leadership was not serving them. They were taking advantage of them. Can you imagine someone walking 200 miles with the best, flawless, firstborn sheep of their flock, and being told that it wasn't good enough. So they had to spend the money that they brought for food and lodging on another flawless sheep at the at an outrageous price, only to find that that sheep that they had just brought and walked for hundreds of miles with was sold to someone else. It's infuriating. So why did I bring this up? I, I, I'm bringing this up because of this time of year. You know, it's just, it's we're, we're very short time away from... Palm Sunday, from Holy Week. And I just want to remind you that God doesn't need your money. Some preachers, especially those on TV, will use every tactic that they can to take your money. Some churches will do the same thing. Some charities will do the same thing. Some ministries will do the same thing. But this is not new. It happened in Jesus' day too. That's why he had to cleanse the temple. Now, my advice is to be wise this time of year. Don't believe everyone who is asking for a donation. God has given you resources. He has given you blessings. You are a funnel for God's blessings. But you need to show some maturity in what you do with those blessings. Don't just throw them away. Look at who you're giving the money to and see whether or not they're using it for God's purposes. Of course, you can always give money to people in need. God loves for you to give money to people who are in need, to charities that are in need and serving those, widows and orphans. Repeatedly, look through Scripture. Widows and orphans, widows and orphans, widows and orphans, the poor, the poor, the poor, widows and orphans. The people who really need your money will probably never ask you for it. Let that sink in. God wants you to seek out those in need and help them. I hope you have a great day. Be blessed.